So thank you for joining us today. Thank you for joining us today. We're really um, glad that you could come be part of this and to see how we're using Athena as a way, a video platform as a way to empower teachers um, versus as just something that they watch and feel embarrassed by, maybe. So um, we're going to get started in a second. We just thought this was kind of funny. So uh, I don't know if you guys feel this way ever. Signed up for summer PD and realized you actually have to go <laughs> that morning. Um, so our objectives today for our session are going to be that we're going to determine a purpose for video in the classroom, either reflection, coaching, peer feedback, and or artifact collection for evaluation. Um, we're going to explore Athena and its features that help teachers use videos to impact instruction. And we'll create next steps for our journey using video to impact instruction. And this is what it usually looks like when we're recording in our classrooms. So our, and you know, usually have two or three kids pop up in front of it. And so we're going to introduce ourselves real quickly, and then we want to kind of get to know a little bit about all of you. Okay. I'll start, I guess. Um, I'm Carrie Ayler. I teach seventh grade language arts at the International School in Adams 12. Just finished my 10th year um, at that school. Uh, did three and a half years prior in high school. Um, have been working with Sarah and Kim for a number of years now. And just excited to have this opportunity to kind of continue growing myself, kind of past the typical beginning year teacher evaluation, training, orientation, kind of keeps me in the loop of being reflective of my own practice in my own classroom. So I am Sarah Rosillo. I'm also at the International School of Seventh Grade Language Arts. Um, I will be starting my 10th year this fall, and I have been working, co-teaching, and collaborating with Carrie um, every year that I've been there. And Kim has played the role of both my coach and my mentor for the last six or seven years now. Um, and she's really been the person who brought this to our attention, and I use it as a way to reflect, grow, um, I use it for evaluation, and I find it's a tool that really just empowers me in the classroom. Um, so I'm really thankful for her bringing that to me. And I'm Kim McLaughlin. Um, I've been at the International School as a language arts teacher, and then the last three years as an instructional coach. Um, this year, I'm transitioning to a new position. I'm going to be the District 12 Educators Association Coordinator, um, and hoping to bring some of this work through our association, so on a larger scale outside of just one school. Um, these two are very nice, saying that I come in and help, but actually they're my classroom that I bring all new teachers into. Uh, they're amazing teachers, so we're really lucky to get to learn from them today, too. So appreciate that. All right. Well, before we get into the actual video piece, we want to talk about there's some steps that we feel are very essential before you go in and either watch yourself or go in and coach a person or give a friend feedback, a peer feedback, um, or turn in artifacts for evaluation. It's really important that you have a clear idea of what your core values are because you need to know when you go in to watch something, what place do you immediately go to first? So for example, um, one of my core values is relationships. And so when I walk into a classroom, I've really had to, as a coach, train my mind a little bit to focus in on what that teacher wants me to watch versus just my core values. So, you know, I would have, before I've really thought about this, walked into a classroom and looked at how is the teacher interacting with the kids? What kind of, you know, vocabulary are they using with them? You know, do, what kind of relationship? I looked at a lot of those pieces where maybe that teacher really wanted me to be looking at how are the kids collaborating together or something different. So I think it's really important for us in education and even as, as association members, as ARs, to know what are our core values so that we can figure out times for us to lean in on those core values and sometimes when we need to pull back from them to be understanding of someone else's core values. So we're going to do a quick activity. Um, we're just going to do the top part of this. There's a list of values on the back of the sheet. You're going to read through the list. You're going to circle 10. Then you have to cross off five of those 10. And then you have to cross off two more so that what you're left with are three core values. What are your strongest three core values? So let's just take a couple minutes. Start, yeah? And then try to narrow it down. Down to five, three, at the end. Whenever we do this activity, even though a lot of people, you know, you hear those jokes about how I can spot a teacher from a mile away because we all dress similar, or, you know, they're all alike, or they're all. But what's fascinating is when you do this activity, 
there's barely ever a time where you walk into a room where every single, like the core values are pretty consistent among everyone. So we really are more different than people think so. So in listening to you all, um, knowing that you guys are veteran teachers, you've been in roles for a very long time and maybe you play different roles. You've been able to learn what your core value are. And even though getting it to three is difficult, you know what makes you the professional that you are. And because we're all a little bit different, we consider our core values very special to us. However, sometimes when we get into the realm of observation in our, pre in our profession, the core values that we have don't always mesh with maybe the core values of the other person involved in that observation, whether it's your evaluator or maybe a peer. Um, so there's a little bit of a different association with that word. And that's kind of what I want to play with now. We're actually going to do a little bit of a word association activity. So in the center of your tables, you have a uh, scratch pads if you need them or post-its if you want to use those. But I'd like you to do a little bit of a thought and jump. Considering your own core values, when you think about the word observation as a teacher, as an education professional, what words or phrases would be associated with that? <laughs> So think about in the different roles you've played, whether it's been a teacher, a coach, a mentor, an association member, what words or phrases could be associated with the word observation? I'll give you about just a minute to just jot and write. And here's Eddie Murphy's idea of it. Okay. Take about 10 seconds to finish your thought. And then what I'd like you to do is with the post-its at your table, when we think about observations, depending on what words or phrases you chose, they might fall on a particular gauge. Your perspective might see them as very negative. Maybe they're in the neutral realm. Maybe there's a time of good and bad with it. Or maybe there is some really positive um, associations with observation. I want to give you a chance at your table to just share out a couple words that you chose. But ultimately, I want your group to choose three that you come to a consensus with like, okay, in the different roles that I played, I can see how this would be associated with observation. And then I want you to come up and just place it on the scale here of where do you think that would lie for the majority of teachers? Negative, neutral, or positive. So I'm gonna give you about three minutes to share and then come up with three and then place it on the scale for me where you think they would lie. And don't worry about trying to have one for each area That's of the scale. Whatever they Which fall. ones resonate the most with your table? much more in the neutral to negative realm of observation. Um, some of you had a few things that were similar, such as in this group you guys talked about it being a snapshot, only that one moment of time, and this group had conversations about that. What about the rest of the time, and what about the rest of what I'm doing? Evaluation, I found this one really interesting. Observation, a lot of people associated with, okay, you're evaluating me, or is it going to go into my evaluation? How is this going to, um, hurt me later on, perhaps, or help me. And feelings of inadequacy or pointlessness. This group, why did you say pointless? This was a word that kind of surprised me. Um, you know, if you don't get actionable feedback as a result okay. of your observation, then the purpose is what? Right, for me, for me it's, it, it's been a uh, year after year of having highly effective evaluation and growth goals that are not connected to my evaluation or to next year's so what is the point? I think this is a great segue into this next piece because using something like video in your classroom brings purpose to observations. It brings empowerment to the teachers so that they don't feel like there's no reason for that person to be in their room anymore. There is purpose. So we're going to jump into what are the purposes for videotaping in the classroom. So this is something that I feel like I didn't even think about before starting this, like how many different ways this could help me, how many purposes I could have as a teacher. Um, for reflection, so the first one, how can you use videotaping just to reflect? Um, this could be done individually, so it could be done just for yourself. I mean, you could record and just have that, you know, personal time to reflect. How did it go? What went well? What would I do differently next time? To observe it from a different perspective. Um, it could be with a mentor up here, but again, it could also be something individual and private. Um, they are made for personal and professional growth. So, you know, you get to have ownership of what that looks like. Is it something you just personally want to get better at? Or do you really want to try something different professionally and you have a different goal for that? 
Um, and it may not be directed to evaluation. This may be something that stays completely private for that teacher or that person, um, and it never is measured by anyone else. It's just for yourself. With each of the purposes, we're also gonna provide some feedback stems, and we'll get into those a little bit later with Athena, so I'm gonna jump through them pretty quickly. There's four categories that Athena uses for feedback, and they are questions, suggestions, strengths, and notes. And you'll get to see more of those in a bit and kind of play with that. So the second purpose, so after, um, maybe reflection is not the purpose that you really want to use for kind of videotaping and trying this. Maybe you want to use coaching. Maybe that's the purpose for doing something like this. Um, and this is something I know that Kim has been really um, helpful for us in our classrooms. So we as teachers team up with our coach, or it could be a peer even. You first agree upon the specific goals or the targeted areas. What is it that you want to get better at? What is the goal? What's the purpose of being videotaped? What's the purpose of working with that peer or coach? So you guys have agreed upon that platform already. You also agree upon the protocol. What does it mean to view the videos? What does it mean to respond and give feedback? What does it mean to reflect? And then how do you take next steps together? What does that look like? Could be linked to evaluation. It's up to that person if that's what they want to do. And again, it could be for professional growth or it could be for personal growth. It's again, depending on that goal that you set, what's the purpose that you want the videotaping to be happening? And something um, a lot of professionals, like I know Jim Knight, he's a coaching guru. He really recommends you create a coaching contract. And I think that's valuable even if you're doing peer feedback, you create a contract between each other because um, there's a perception in some buildings where a coach is gonna go tell the principal everything they've seen or done. And so if you have that contract ahead of time written out where it says, I will look at your videos. These are the parts of your videos I may talk to an administrator about. Like, um, I may say that I went into their room and they recorded a lesson about with their kids working collaboratively. But I'm not going to give any positive or negative feedback to that person. Um, so I think that that's a real big key piece too, is having that conversation. And then also look into, um, like I know our master agreement in Adams 12 has wording around whether someone can come in and record you without your permission or not. So that's something that you might want to check into in your districts as well, is do your districts already have that put into place or is that an issue you're going to have to address with an administrator or people? Yes. I also see it as a really good tool for the teacher if um, on your evaluation the principal or the administrator said, you know, I didn't see collaboration, mm -hmm. and you say, I have a video and you could upload it into Rand or whatever, Yep. To show here. Is yeah, that's our, so and that is exactly one of our yep. purposes. Yeah. It could be sure. great to do artifacts for things that they didn't know. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. We're actually going to lead into that in just a second. So, again, we'll have some stems provided for you. The third purpose that you could use this for is if you want peer feedback. Maybe you don't have a coach in your building, or maybe you don't have that relationship built. Um, maybe you have a peer that you work closely with and that you trust and you want to work together with. Again, has that partnership between two professionals, so you've agreed upon, you know, here are our kind of parameters, this is what we're agreeing to, this is the relationship we're going to be having. This could be great for new teachers collaborating, collaborating with veteran teachers, could be a great piece for uh, horizontal or vertical teams. I know in our building we have 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, but we're all on three different schedules. So for me to go into a teammate's classroom, I teach at the same time, so I have to get coverage, or how do I get out of my room to go watch someone? that may not be possible, or even to go see an eighth grade teacher. You know, we've done some vertical work before, like how am I as a seventh grade teacher preparing my kids to go on to you as the eighth grade teacher? What am I doing that's working well? What could I do differently to help support your teaching and the kids? So great place for not only horizontal teams, but also vertical teams, just collaboration um, in general. Um, again, have that agreed upon protocol that you know kind of what it means to observe, to give feedback, to, put, to meet for next steps. Have those specific goals picked ahead of time. Everyone knows what's kind of being looked for or kind of wanting feedback to be given on. Um, this could be linked to evaluation or again, it could just be professional for yourself and personal, but nothing that you want to really be evaluated. And a couple other ways, like our buildings in the past, mm -hmm. um, their grade level is really great. They do book studies all the time. Um, their group of teachers and so this is a great thing to do after a book study like did we actually implement any of the things we just read about mm -hmm. and you can watch each other um, we talked to someone in our session yesterday who's from a much smaller school district where there might be only one sixth grade social studies teacher in that building so this allows them to be able to collaborate they could collaborate with a teacher across the state 
you know, even working on similar common core standards, let's say. So there's a lot of abilities for collaboration. Um, again, feedback systems we'll do with data. And then lastly, artifact collection. I kind of walked into this a second ago. Um, includes, again, a partnership between a teacher and evaluator administrator. So whoever that evaluator is. I know in our building, our administrators kind of have a list, sometimes like content areas, and that's just kind of the groups they have. You know, that's who you're assigned to. So you have that agreed upon relationship with that person. Um, having specific goals and target areas already chosen, so you have ownership of what you really want to be kind of someone watching, um, getting you feedback on. This one is directly linked to valuation. It's a great place to use for artifact collection, as you said. You know, them coming in for one lesson, maybe that's that, you know, kind of an announced visit. It's kind of, you know, planned ahead of time. But maybe you didn't get to show them the piece that you really wanted. It didn't work out the way you thought it was going to be. You know, doing a lesson again, reteaching something, videotaping and having that be something that you want that evaluator to watch and see, you know, next steps you've taken or how you've changed or how you tried something different. It's a great place to do that. Um, Again, have the protocol agreed upon, again, personal or professional, but it's a great way to add evidence to Randa to have communication with that evaluator after maybe just that one official. Well, I like that because we talked about observation being kind of a snapshot or feeling like it was inadequate because it just happens relatively in isolation. Mm -hmm. And so the ability to like keep that conversation ongoing, which is I think the idea of the observation anyways, right, in order to create like a conversation. So that's good, I like it. Well, it for me, it's a partnership. Yeah, for me as a teacher, I set goals for the year, right? I'm supposed to work on them all school year. So if you came in once first semester, how do you know if I've taken steps through second semester? What have I been doing with the kids for myself? What have I tried? So I think it kind of opens that communication outside of just maybe that one time they come in or maybe they came in just for a couple minutes. Yeah. And I think for myself, just as a teacher, the, the way that I felt most empowered is that knowing that I was going to be using something like Athena or a videotaping in my classroom, I felt more supported in having a conversation with people prior to coming into my classroom, when sometimes a lot of new teachers, they will just wait to see what happens. What is this going to be like? They're going to come in, they're going to say something, and then it's just going to be over. But I can really be more proactive in communicating with those people before and say, no, let's agree upon targets and objectives and what can we look for and agree upon and what we're going to give feedback to each other about. I know that there's a purpose set. When prior, if this wasn't happening, I don't know what the purpose is and I don't know when it's going to happen. And it helps as a coach because how many of you have ever walked in to do a classroom observation and I mean you take notes. If there's no point, like if you haven't set that goal, you take notes and there's like six pages and it's easy to pinpoint every single thing that person did wrong. Not because they're a bad teacher, it's just you're just in there and that's, you notice that, oh, those two kids weren't paying any attention, yet the 30 others might have been, but you know, your mind yeah. goes there, so it's really helpful. Good. Let's get into Athena. All right, so now we're gonna jump into Athena. Um, this is just a little definition. It allows teachers to upload videos of themselves teaching and share it with peers or coaches who then comment on their video. Um, it's designed so that reviewers can quickly jump to specific comments or moments in the video to facilitate a conversation about a, vis a video um, rather than one-off comments, and it does require a paid license, um, but we'll talk about some of that later. Um, what we have is I created a little, I might have to, it's a screencast of how Athena works, and then we'll have you guys get into it. So if you guys have Athena pulled up, if you want to take a couple seconds just to have your account pulled up in front of you for me. All right, and bear with me. This is like my third time using this. Casey is forcing me to try things like this on one of my co-pilot classes, so I'm experimenting. Hi, everyone. By now, hopefully, we've uh, helped you all get into Athena. And now what I want to do is just kind of show you some of the navigation tools so that you can do the activity that we're planning on doing today. Um, I've been using this site for a while now, so I have a lot of videos. Yours will probably look pretty blank here. But what I want you to do is come up here and click on this icon, and then you need to go to groups. Um, you should have groups based off of whether you are our session one, two, or three. You're our second so session. So you'll click on our session, 
when you get in here, you can look at activity. There should be videos, um, but we haven't, no one else has added any except for the ones that I've added. Um, you can look at who members are. As of right now, um, there aren't any, but so you guys eventually should have there will be some. You can look at conversations. So if you uploaded a video, you can see which videos people have added comments to. And then the final piece that we're really going to dive in today is this exploration. This is where you can actually create um, an exploration for you and a group to participate in. So center it around one thing. So ours today is this observations to empower teachers. When you click in here, um, it will have our instructions. Um, after watching the example videos, post your own video asking for feedback for one of the following purposes, reflection, coaching, peer feedback, or artifacts. So if this were um, a real exploration where we were going to have you guys go back out into your classrooms and actually record your class, this is the final product piece. So the next um, couple of steps are what you would do to practice it to get into using the site. This would be the final piece and then all of us who are on the group would have access to that video because you were sharing that video. The cool thing about Athena is that no one else has access to your account. So I've used other programs in the past where as the administrator I could get into their accounts. Um, this I, I can't do that. Like you create your account, you decide who you share with. End of story. Like so that's what's really cool about this is it really gives you the power to control collection. Now obviously you're not going to post your own video today, but I wanted you to see what the final product would be. So then also it shows that once you have posted a video, I expect you to provide feedback to at least two other people on their videos. But the part we're going to dive into is this example analysis because it will allow us a chance to get to play um, within the site. So you're going to watch a video and provide comments using the Colorado um, Quality Standards Framework or using the stems that we provided you. Also keeping in mind um, what your core values are. So when you guys go into Athena and set up an exploration, it has a drop down of all the, um, it has different state standards. It has um, a lot of different states or groups have put in their own information so you can use it. So the Colorado Teacher Quality Standards are listed in there so you can click on it. So then as you give feedback, you can then drop it down and decide which standard, quality standard does that feedback relate to. So it really is connected to the evaluation process if you're using RANDA. I know DPS had some questions yesterday because theirs is different, but um, most of us can use that tool. And how that might impact what you're commenting on and, your, and what the purpose is. So um, I have four options for you. If you would like to watch a video um, about artifact collection, like someone would use to upload into Randa or as part of their teacher evaluation, you can click on this video. Video example two is about peer feedback. So if you are interested in practicing how to use the video um, for peer feedback, like in a peer team, you can use that video. Video three is about reflection. Maybe you're just watching a video solely to reflect on the instruction. And the fourth video example is for coaching. Maybe you want to participate in a coaching cycle at some point. Um, you have a coach in your building or you are a coach. You could use this video and practice giving that type of feedback. Um, I'm going to pull up this video under coaching just because it's the longest and I'm not going to have you guys start until later in. Really, I just want to show you the video so I can show you the components here. Um, here's where you press play. Um, as you press play, if you want to stop at that particular moment and write a question, a suggestion, a strength, or a note, you can do so. So for example, okay, I could stop it here. I click on which area I want to provide a comment. I'll write my comment. So for example, um, uh, it looks like your students were collaborative. <laughs> and it's spell checks. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now if I want to, I can go down and look at the Colorado standards, the quality teacher standards. So I'm going to say that relates to engaging students. 
and then I'll submit that. Now, as you can see, a blue line shows up so that that participant can now look back and see, oh, at this point, someone provided me a comment on strengths. It'll also be down here. It'll show what the comment is and what it's related to. A pretty cool thing is, is if you um, are doing this for yourself, at the end of your video, if you want, you can export all your comments and have a list of all your comments, and it gives you the actual time that each occurred. So it's a really valuable tool for you to use as you are um, looking back at your work and the feedback people are providing you. All right, so now it's your opportunity to get out and play. Thank you. So what we want to do now is provide you some time to get into the site. Um, I know we're all kind of in a tight space and not everybody has headphones. So if you want to spread out a bit so you can watch or if you want to pair up with someone um, and watch together. But what we really want you to do is use the feedback stems if you want to try some of these. But one of the cool things about Athena is usually when you give people feedback on just a regular video, you watch the whole thing and then you write down all your comments. It's really important that as you practice with this tool, that you're stopping in the moment. And it's okay if you ask them a question and then a minute later in the video, you see that they do exactly what you asked them about, because now it's an opportunity for you to click again and say, oh, hey, you know, great job. I noticed that you tried X, Y, or Z. So um, that's the one thing we noticed yesterday when people were playing with this is they watch the whole video and then they go back and add all their comments. Try really hard because you're going to be more efficient and the site works better if you're actually commenting along the way. I kind of relate it to if you're having kids use like a Google Classroom or a Google Doc and they're submitting to you. You're writing comments throughout their piece. You know, you're not waiting to the very end and then just giving them a summary of things. Like, you want to give them pinpointed comments throughout their work. Same thing with the videos. Like, you know, give that person feedback throughout. Um, so, before videos yeah, that you guys have, one of them is just reflection and personal reflections doesn't really have any personal goals other than you're just reflecting on anything that you see personally. The other three, we want you to know a particular goal that the teacher had in mind that you might want to use specifically in your feedback. So if you look at the artifact collection, the personal goal or the professional goal for the teacher was student engagement. So maybe your feedback really wants to center around what were the students doing to engage in the learning target. The peer feedback, uh, the goal was for student self-assessment and rubric use. This teacher wanted students to really start taking ownership of their work and being able to um, create next steps and reflect on work using a rubric system. And then finally, in the coaching, which is the last video, and if you do this one, it's a very long video. We only recommend that you watch about the first 11 minutes. Or no, you start at minute 11. Oh, start at minute 11, sorry. Uh, and this particular goal uh, the teacher had was for student discussion, improving and um, implementing more student discussion in the classroom. So if you guys want to pair up and look at a particular type of feedback, you guys can do that. Or if you want to just watch individually, if you have headphones, you can use that. Or you can spread out if you feel the need to. I just want to show you one more um, piece. On every video, you'll see these three boxes. Um, if you click on them, they'll give you, so this one has background information tells you when the video was taken, what subject, grade level, they might give you some ideas about their lessons. You can read that. Uh, this, again, is just um, more things, giving you more information about what it is. This box here is a kind of a cool box because the only person who can comment in this is the person who uploaded it and a coach. So if we're in a whole group like this and I'm labeled the coach for the group, I can write comments, like in this one, I wrote comments back to Tabitha, and only Tabitha sees those comments from me. The rest of the group doesn't, whereas the rest of the group can see all of the timed comments at the bottom. So there's still a way to have some private conversations with a coach that your whole group isn't seeing. But let's just kind of talk about what are some of the pros and cons of using Athena as a tool for teachers, and how does it empower them? Because that's what we really want to focus on. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, well, I just like the fact that you can place little markers in time, so when teachers look back, they know exactly when you asked that question or made that observation. I always think of teacher feedback being, you know, a meeting you have with your principal two weeks later, and he's giving you notes, and you have yes. no idea, you know, what he's talking, <laughs> what the person's talking yep. about. So this would be very helpful to 
help with that. Actually see the moment in time where the question's being asked. Right, and Jim Knight, when he coaches, um, he actually does a lot of video coaching where they record it, but then he sits with the person he's coaching and they watch the video together. So that's kind of cool too, because you could stop at those exact moments and have a great conversation about what was happening there. It's kind of like, as a coach, when I'm in a teacher's classroom, I'm in there consistently, like you know, once or twice weekly. So I can see growth in that teacher. But an administrator, if they happen to pop in once, give them a ton of feedback, and then come in on a Friday sixth hour, which we all know what Friday sixth yeah. hours are like in middle school, <laughs> and they don't see any of that, well, I could go back to that person and say, well, I've seen them do these things, but that's just my, my word, and it gets tricky on whether or not I should be sharing that or not. But if they have videos to show, well, you came in sixth period on a Friday. Let me show you what happened on this date and this date and this date. It makes a huge difference. I do remember getting an email towards the end of the school year saying, teachers may not video students this day. <laughs> and we did. I don't know what happened with that. I don't know the background of why we got that. I don't know if a teacher was taking a picture and sending it to the parents so you can see what your kid does. And that's something we. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the point of this tool is to catch kids being bad, right? Like, this tool really is the ability to help instructors improve practice, and I think to take whatever professional learning they're going through and see if they're actually using it in the classroom. Like, how is that professional learning impacting and or changing instruction so that way these teachers really are growing? Like, I mean, that's amazing, I love it. I also totally see why you need to have those values conversations first. Because as I was watching this, like the video that Mike and I watched, like I was totally approaching what she was doing for my own things, which I don't think was fair to her, as I'm like reflecting on my comments, I was like, oh man, maybe I was being a little harsh, um, because I didn't want, not to want, I didn't really think about what she was trying to do. So, I don't know, you really have to have this conversation, this well, that's huge. And you do have to be careful a little bit with, um, recording kids. I know in our district the policy is as long as it's being used in building for teacher use, I don't have to have permission from every parent. Now we have every kid when they start the school year fill out a form so we know at the beginning of the school year who can or cannot. Uh, but we had someone ask us that question about, okay, you see somebody doing something naughty in the video, can you then use it later? Yeah. Um, and what we kind of talked about is I mean, my personal, I don't think that unless you've had a conversation with a parent saying, I'm going to record your kid so that we can see what they're doing in the classroom, it's really ever appropriate to use a video as part of a conversation with a parent. But, I, you know, I don't know. That might be different for different districts. Well, let me go cases. back to the goals you have. You know, your goals as an educator in your targeted areas that you want to grow in are not to be punitive to kids. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's. Nobody's like, I have to be better. You know, that doesn't, doesn't <laughs> cross my mind so when I'm doing these. So I think that's always, you know, going back to the goal at hand, you know, so you know your values are out of it and you're also really focusing on what that teacher wants to grow in or what the peer feedback goal that you guys have with each other. But I can see where if a fight happened to break out in that classroom at that moment where the principal would want to use that video to bring both parents <laughs> and in I, and say, I would wait look, him he and started. The SRO to come. <laughs> kind of take those steps with me. But there yeah. was a question over here um, about using this with students. Students don't have Athena accounts. That is one thing that we want to make clear. It is for the teacher use more than anything else. However, what a great way to model for students how to do feedback and how to be a model of self-reflection. You know, guys, I'm, I'm continuously working in my own career. I want to get better. I want to share a little bit about my own personal journey and what I do to reflect. So our students in our building they know their teachers work very collaboratively and most of the time there's people in our room watching us teach or videos happening so our kids are kind of used to it but if your students aren't and maybe that's a concern that you have about bringing video into the room be very honest and transparent with them about why you're doing it and use it as a model of self-reflection um, it kind of bridges one of those good citizenship skills you want for themselves anyway um, and so can i just ask a question uh -huh. related to taking the class 20 dollar fee Access for a semester, so um, a teacher could do that in fall semester and then take another class spring semester and have the same deal. So that yep. Yep. at the end of their evaluation cycle for the year, they they still have access to yep. the videos. Yes. Yeah. So they uh, so with the account, you always have access to it. You just can't upload anything else. So like basically, if you don't 
go through and pay like that, for that. Um, you just don't get to upload videos, but you will but always you have access. Yep. Right. Okay. And I would absolutely recommend if teachers are using this and they're thinking about using it for artifact collection, but maybe they won't be taking classes for the entire year. Again, exporting the comments and printing off the conversations that have happened mm -hmm. with the video so that they also have a, a hard copy of it that they might submit as an artifact collection. And here's something I've done to engage in professional development and the types of conversations I've been having with teachers to improve myself. So tell them to print it off, save that copy in case they don't have it for the whole year. Awesome. That's a great idea. Um, well, while Casey's thinking, I just want to say that um, I wish this tool had uh, been around when I was still in the classroom. Uh, you know, it'll be there next year. <laughs> it will be when I return to the classroom. Um, you know, one of the things that that I, I was always critical of pre SD one ninety one. Our state evaluation law was that we didn't have a statewide definition of what effective teaching looked like. And it wasn't aligned across districts and across schools, even. And in some circumstances, it's still not aligned, depending on the quality of evaluator and exactly. like that. Yeah. But here, the fact that you can um, uh, upload uh, video evidence and receive um, uh, documented feedback, and hopefully, the feedback you're getting from whoever's watching the video is actionable feedback, right? But then you even have evidence of whether or not you received actionable mm -hmm. feedback um, that could lead to growth. And so I think this is a really great way, A, to help educators uh, improve their practice, but in the absence or inability to improve practice, then you have the documentation that, that I think would help a teacher realize their own deficiencies and so. And what a, what a great way to kind of flip the perspective in the sense of sometimes when we feel our evaluation is pointless or our feedback, as you say, sometimes I don't get feedback, it kind of holds your evaluator accountable as well in the sense of you are doing in-time feedback, what you're watching, you're immediately stopping and providing in-context feedback, you're holding them accountable as well um, and making that teacher more empowered in that relationship and in their own evaluation as well. And I like it too as an idea. It's a tool that we as an association could use. Um, I would like to start experimenting with using it next year as, you know, a teacher is having trouble with their administrator and they don't trust the feedback or they don't trust that, but they want some advice and don't feel safe to get it at their own building. Wow, they could come to an AR or they could come to me as the coordinator and we could work on Athena and they could actually get neutral advice without it being, yeah. So I just, I think there's a lot of great possibilities. Well, we just wanted to thank you guys for coming and if you need anything, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us and I'll be in touch with all of you about getting our group together. You may um, see some more videos from our class this coming year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Kim has to come back at least once a week to mm -hmm. see us and help us. <laughs> yeah. Before we leave, we just have one more task for you. We want your tables to brainstorm a little bit. We want to see now, if you think about the word observation, after the work we've done today, what are our words that we can put up on this chart now? So if you guys wanted to shout out, what would be new words? Exciting. Exciting. More positive. Uh, yeah, empowering. empowering. Right, to do this, like, I really do feel it's empowering. Collaborative. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would still put their word in the choir. I would add objective, even though I don't consider it to still be 100% objective. I think it lean, allows us to lean more towards objective. Okay. Right, there's an aspect of that process. Awesome. Well, on your tables, there are some handouts um, that Athena sent us for you to take um, with more information about the site. Take the stems, take the core value example. If you would like a blank one to use with maybe teachers or staff, feel free to come get an extra one if you want. Um, or if you want copies of the resources, just let us know. Thank you guys so much. Yes, thank you. There is the evaluation in your folder for the sessions. Don't forget to fill those out. Be kind. Apply to us. But we have the video, so we'll have to watch it anyways. <laughs>